Okay. Uh, so this is Dr. Morton, and uh, this is Logic Design Lecture Three for um, the 28th of August, Friday. Welcome. Uh, so I'm just going to go over the schedule real briefly, and then I'll, we'll get right in. We'll pick up where we left off on Wednesday. Uh, I'm I'm still working to get the uh, prereq test up. As soon as I do, hopefully uh, hopefully by tomorrow sometime, uh, or rather by Friday, maybe Saturday. So once I get it up. At your convenience, you can do it. Again, it doesn't count against you. It's just for our ABET certification. But it does give me some information about what you know going into the this course. Uh, and so that's the reason for doing it. Okay, let me shrink this down and move this over here. And, um, and now I'm going to adjust this again just a little bit. Okay, and see if we can make that work. Okay, something like that. All right, so syllabus. So here's the syllabus, and I'm just going to go all the way down to where the schedule starts, and we'll see we're at the end of the first week. Uh, let's see, is this, where are we? Uh, not yet, golly. I'm still trying to comprehend the, the advantage of this. Okay, so here's the schedule. We've done Monday. Wednesday and now it's Friday so um, and here's the end of Friday so continue to uh, uh, work on homework one remember it's due on Monday the 31st at uh, 11 59 p.m. Uh, you can turn it in on Blackboard all the links now are fixed for all the rest of the uh, of the turn-ins um, and you must upload either a, a Word document or a PDF do not you can you can do your work on paper you can scan it the, any of the printers at, at UTSA, or most of the public printers anyway, you can scan for free. It'll scan to a JPEG, I believe, and you can email it to your student account. And then you can paste it into a Word or a PDF and upload the Word or PDF. Do not upload the JPEG. Um, so let's see. Uh, if you haven't posted your introduction, meet your classmates to the discussion board, go ahead and do that. And you can be reading about other classmates on there. Uh, you can uh, download the. Uh, we're, we haven't finished with the unit two slides uh, with the unit one slides yet, so you can still download those. But hopefully, we'll get through those today and maybe even start on unit two. Um, you can also begin to work on chapter two in the textbook. Um, and uh, and th and then this will be the video uh, video three actually. Um, theorems of switching algebra well we haven't really quite gotten to that point yet but we will all right so um, okay so that's for that and then um, let's see was there anything else um, yeah all the homework is all, all those due dates are appropriate okay let's um, let's uh, go down here and we will start with the slides okay so uh, and I think I'm gonna see how we're looking here um, okay something like that all right that's not too bad uh, it's not too good either but it's gonna have to do all right we're gonna live with that okay so um, yeah maybe I'll shrink it just a little more maybe we'll move it just a little more down and over here that's probably all you need to see me hopefully that'll work okay uh, if I move around too much, I'll probably disappear. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we ended on the hexadecimal codes. And if you remember, I asked you to make a little table. Actually, we have a table coming up right here. All the hexadecimal digits, 0 through F. I use the capital letters, but the lowercase letters are almost always legal too. And uh, and then you have a uh, the decimal equivalent. So, of course, the hex digits go from 0 to 15. Uh, and... This is the 4-bit binary equivalent. Now notice all possible 4-bit combinations are included in the hex digit. And that's why the 4-bit binary numbers map perfectly into a hex digit. You should memorize these. You should know that D is 1101, A is 1010, and so forth. Um, so it's really helpful just to go ahead and memorize these. The other ones should be straightforward. You know, obviously 0, 1, when the one's over here, that's two. One one is three. One zero zero is four. 
101 is 5, 110 is 6, 111 is 7, 1000 is 8, 1001 is 9, and then 1010 is A, 1011 is B, 1100 is C, and so forth. And finally, 1111 is F. So if you haven't already done this, make a little table for yourself and memorize it. Uh, okay, uh, so here's a here's a hex number. Um, 0A2DH, and so that would be uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's confusing me here, but anyway, I, I'm not sure. Uh, well, yeah, I'm not sure what I was doing with that. All right, well, anyway, um, there is also a nice conversion from binary to octo base 8. It used to be used extensively. It's really not used anymore, so I'm not going to test you on this, and I'm not going to really say much more about it. Uh, but you take three digits, and you convert three binary digits exactly to one octal digit. And uh, like I said, we used to use it when I was uh, a graduate student. Uh, we used it quite a bit because uh, we had computers that had 12-bit uh, uh, instructions, and so we would set those up as uh, four binary, uh, four octal bits. Of course, you could have also done three hex digits, but anyway, that's what we did. Um, all right, uh, negative numbers. So this is a very important topic. So I really, I really want you to pay a, a lot of attention to this, and that you you need to know this. You will use this extensively. It's it's actually you know it's it's really pretty uh, pretty critical information. Let me sorry, let me get this over here. Okay. So here's how this works. There, there have been a number of systems put forward. Of course, the, if you just sat down and I ask you, how would you represent negative numbers in the binary world? And you'd think about it a while. And one of the things you might come up with is designating one of the bits to be a sign bit, and then the other bits would hold the, the magnitude. And of course, that method's been tried. Uh, another, there, you might, it might take you a lot of thinking to come up with any other, some other ways, but uh, one of the ways people tried to do it was to use the ones complement, where you just invert a number and that makes it negative. Um, and that method was looked at too. There are two problems, there are two problems with both of these, and that's what's really caused a num uh, one other way to be put forward, and that is called two's complement. Now two's complement is very similar to one's complement, the way it works is, just like in one's complement, you invert every bit to make it negative, but you add one. And that seems kind of strange, but that's how you do it. Now, there's a better way to do it for humans, but that's definitely how the computers do it. And I'll show you the human way to do it that's a little easier uh, to calculate. Uh, not all the time, but most of the time it's easier to calculate. Um, okay, so, so let's talk about why we don't use sine of magnitude or one's complement and why the twos complement has become the only real way we do negative numbers. Uh, and the reason for that is that, uh, that the, the computer hardware it takes to handle twos complement negative numbers is simpler than the hardware for sine of magnitude and ones complement. One of the reasons why this is true is because in sine of magnitude and ones complement, we have an, an inherent problem. And, and let me let me switch to the uh, let me switch cameras here. I'm going to I'm going to blow this up and switch cameras and I'll show you why this is true. Okay, so I'll turn on the light here. So, if we have um, a two's complement number, one of the, the interesting things that happens is let's say we want to represent 0, all right? So let's we'll use I'll use 8 bits, okay? So 0 a normal zero would be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be normal zero. What happens if we invert that? We get one, 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 one in one's complement. And so that would be negative zero. Or if we use sine of magnitude, let's designate this high order bit as a sine bit. And so we start with zero, 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 zero. zero. So that equals our normal zero. That's eight bits. And why is it so washed out? 
Gosh, I don't, I don't understand that. It's a little better. All right, now we're going to make negative zero. We just changed this upper bit to a one to indicate it's negative, and now we have this, and that equals negative zero. Now the problem with both of these systems is that that we have two representations for zero, but there really is no such thing as negative zero. Zero is considered positive. It's kind of included with the positive numbers. Uh, and so there really isn't such a thing as negative zero. But when you have two different representations for zero, that, that complicates your, your digital hardware to do math. So we would prefer not to do that. In two's complement, it's a little bit different. The way two's complement works, we have, uh, we have 0, 0, 0, 0, and then that equals 0. Now we invert it, and we invert all the bits, and then we add 1 to that. And when we add 1, that's a 0, we carry a 1, that's a 0, carry a 1, that's a 0, carry a 1. Well, son of a gun, we get right back to 0. So the inverse of 0 is exactly the same. So you can see that when we invert, when we do the 2's complemented version of 0, we get 0, the same thing. There are not two representations for 0. There's only one. And that's a distinct advantage because now our hardware only has to know about one representation for 0, and that's 0. We don't have to remember that this is actually also zero, and we don't have to remember that this is also zero. And that makes it a whole lot, that makes our hardware easier. Um, now let me show you one other thing. Let's just take an arbitrary number. Let's say, let's, well, I'm gonna show you two things, two important things, all right? One of them is, um, maybe I'll do this. I think it'll be a little better. Let's do a little binary number here. So we'll, we'll do, uh, Let's just do eight. We'll, we'll do eight bits again. So let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna represent. Um, what's a good number? Uh, I'll represent twenty-five. Okay. Okay. So twenty-five. Uh, let's see. I'll pull this up because it'll be a little easier for me to do it if I have it set up here. Um, yeah. Okay. So. So we we'll go uh, twenty-five. Okay, so that's 11001. 11001. And then that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we padded out to 8 bits. So that's an 8 bit representation of 25. Now, um, let's just check it. So remember how we do this powers of 2. So this is 2 to the 0. And so that's 1 times 1, or 1. 0 times 2. 0 times 4. 1 times 8, so that's 8 plus 1, and then 1 times 16, so that's 16 plus 8 plus 1, so that's uh, 25. Okay, great. Now we've got that. Now, now we know that uh, when we want to take the 2's complement, we should invert every bit and add 1. Okay, so invert every bit. So this will be 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and you add 1. And now you get one 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 zero zero one one one. So this equals minus twenty five in two's complement. Okay, that equals minus twenty five in two's complement. All right. Now, what's uh, there's a couple of things you have to keep in mind here. Uh, but let's do an interesting experiment. Let's add minus twenty five and twenty five and see what we get. So, so twenty. So this is minus twenty-five. So I'm going to shift it. Here. That's minus twenty-five. So, so I'm going to take. I'll do minus twenty-five, and then I'm going to add to that twenty-five, which again, uh, twenty-five was just zero 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 one one zero zero one. So zero 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 one one uh, zero zero one. Let's add these. And what do we get? Well, 1 plus 1 is 0 carrier 1, 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 
zero carrier one, zero carrier one, zero, and we have a one uh, carry out. Now in two's complement math, we always ignore the carry outs. They don't count. So what we get is zero. So when we add minus 25 and 25, we get zero. So that's great. So that's exactly what we should get. Uh, now, one of the things that's interesting, what if we, what if, what if we take an 8-bit number, let's say in this case, let's take, uh, let's take um, 120, 120, um, let's take 128, okay, or let's take 120, let's take 130. So that would be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. That's, a, that's 130. So that equals 130. Now let's invert it. Now before we do that, notice a funny thing here. This 1 is already, this, this 1 is already a 1. And, and even though in 2's complement, we don't, this doesn't really count as a, as a sign bit. It turns out it does tell us whether it's negative or positive. In 2's complement, all negative numbers have the first high order bit as a 1, and all positive numbers have the first high order bit as 0. So, so it turns out we already have a problem. We know when we invert this, we're not, we're not going to get, we're, well, if we invert it, invert every bit, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, and add 1, that's going to be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So, that's that's not going to be minus 130 because for starters the higher order bits is zero it's not even negative so what happened what was the problem here and the problem is that we cannot fit minus plus and minus 130 into 8 bits in fact in in 8 bits we can in two's complement form we can fit we can go from minus 128 all the way to plus 127. But we cannot fit minus 130 in, and we can't fit plus 130 in either. Neither of those are, are legal, uh, because we can only go from minus 128 to plus 127. And the reason for that is, with 8 bits, we can represent 2 to the n numbers. Well, that's 2, two to the 8. 2 to the 8 equals 256. Well, so that's the biggest number sign, that's the biggest unsigned number you can fit in 8 bits. But when you want to do 2's complement, you're going to fit plus and minus numbers, so you only get about half that. And the way it works out, you get one more negative number because zero counts as a positive number. So you actually have 128 negative numbers and 128 positive numbers. But your negative numbers go from minus 128 all the way to minus one. And the positive numbers go from zero all the way to plus 127. So you get the same number of negative and positive numbers, but you, you get 128 of them, but because you start with zero, your maximum positive number is 127. And here you start with minus one, you get to go all the way to minus 128. So when you want to try and fit minus 130 into eight bits, size of two's complement minus number, it won't fit because the, big, the smallest two's complement minus number you can get to is minus 128. You can't get to minus 130. And you can't even get to plus 130 as a sign two's complement value because if you write this, it's already a negative number. And this this actually, I don't know what it is, it's, some, it's, it's a fairly large negative number, but it's not minus 130. So the first thing you have to do when you play around with um, two's complement numbers is you have to make sure that the number you're trying to put in the, let's see, I'm gonna switch this back. The number you're trying to put in the, yeah and somehow I got completely off the screen. Oh yeah, and then this, I guess this is like this. Okay, and I don't know how this worked, but anyway it did somehow. Yeah. Okay. 
and then may have may not really be exactly where I need to be here. Okay, let's let's shrink it up a little. Okay, all right. So bottom line is, you you uh, you have to pay attention to whether or not your two's complement number will fit. Okay, so let me just take a step back. When we represent binary numbers in computers, first off, we're talking about integers, just integers. We're not talking about fractional numbers with fractional portions. That's a whole different uh, mess, actually. Uh, so I'm having trouble getting my face on here. So, so because we're just talking about integers, if you want to deal with positive and negative integers, then universally in computers we use two's complement. And uh, if you have, say, eight bits, then you have to pay attention that if you're, you have to decide when you're, when you're going to set aside eight bits to store a number, whether or not you're going to consider it as an unsigned positive number where you can't have any negatives, you really can't have a sign. We just consider everything positive. If that's the case, you can store numbers from 0 to 255 in 8 bits. On the other hand, if you want to store signed numbers, then you can store minus 128 to plus 127 in 8 bits. Now, if you're, if you're only in, say, 4 bits, in 4 bits you can store minus 8 to plus 7. And in... 16 bits, you can store bigger numbers. And you can always configure these things out. But there's a limit. And if you try and, if you try and use, uh, say, an 8-bit variable for, uh, uns for signed numbers, you have to know you've just cut the capacity in half of the, the largest number you can store. And so that's, a, that's an important consideration. Hopefully, Hopefully that made sense. I, we'll come back and talk about this again, but I want you to kind of get this idea. Okay, moving on. Um, so again, this is one's complement. I've kind of already talked about this. Uh, positive numbers, the higher the bits always zero, and the rest of the bits are just normal binary conversion. But negative numbers, you'd use this little formula here, but it, and, and you form them by simply complementing every bit. But we don't use one's complement. Uh, we, we do invert numbers, but we don't use one's complement. Two's complement, you, you basically do the same thing uh, where you invert every bit and add one, or you can do this another, another way, which is uh, actually easier for humans, and it's described right here. And I'll explain it. You can form the two's complement of a positive, well, you can complement it either way, but you can form the complement by flipping every bit inverting every bit, uh, sorry, you can, you, you, can, you can form it by inverting every bit and adding one, or you can do it this way. You can, uh, you can complement every bit starting from the first bit to the left of the first one. All right, so now here, here we have a number, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. So, so you start from the right and you copy all the bits until you get to the first one, and you copy that, and then you flip every bit after that. So you flip, you to turn this into a two's complement number, then say here's your original number, okay, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. So you, you copy zero, zero, one, and then you flip the zero to a one, the one to a zero, the zero to a one, and the one to a zero. Now it turns out this is exactly the same as flipping every bit and adding one. It's just that you don't have to do the addition. Okay, so you start from the right side, you copy every bit till you get to the first one, you copy that, and then you flip every bit after that. Okay, so that's one, that's a simple way for humans to do it. For computers, we just invert every bit and add one, and you'll see why as we go down the road, uh, but that's definitely how we would do it in hardware. It's much easier. Uh, all right. Um, so, two's complement makes binary math a lot easier. Uh, when, you're si when you're adding unsigned numbers, you have to pay attention to the carry bit. And if you add two unsigned numbers and you have a carry out, then you've overflowed, which means you, 
you have a value bigger than the size. So let's say you have two 8-bit numbers and you want to add them together and store the results in 8 bits. Well, that's great. You can do that as long as you don't exceed 255. But if you add, say, 130 and 130, you're going to be up to 260. That's going to exceed 255, so you're going to overflow. The number you actually have uh, in, in, in the register, if you add those two and you put it in, say, one register, the number in there is going to be uh, 260 minus 255. It's actually going to be 5. It's not what you wanted. You wanted 260, you got 5. But all computers uh, are set up to turn on a carry bit to alert you that you did an operation that, that overflowed uh, the set-aside space. And so you know that, you, that your overflow means that you got a number bigger than you can hold in 8 bits. You could also do this for 16 bits and 32 bits and 64 bits, whatever. Uh, and if you're dealing with a 32-bit computer, then you'd, you'd be using 32 bits, whatever. But uh, in two's complement, that's a different story. If you're adding two signed numbers, say two 8-bit signed numbers, and you add them together and you get an overflow in your carry bit, it doesn't matter. What, what you have to do is you have to do a different test to detect an overflow in two's complement. Um, and, in, and in two's complement, the way you detect an overflow is, is like this. There, there are three cases. First case is you have a positive, you're adding a positive and a negative. And when you add a positive and a negative, you can never overflow. The second case is you're adding two positives. If you add two positive numbers, then uh, if you get a negative number, you overflowed. Because obviously if you add two positive, you can't have a negative result, right? And the third case is if you add two negatives and you get a positive result, that's an overflow because it, you shouldn't get a positive number by adding two negatives ever. So, so we ignore the carry bit, but we have to do a different test. We check to see if we have two positives and we got a negative or if we have two negatives and we got a positive, or if we have a, a negative and a positive uh, add-ends to start with, then we know we don't even have to check we're good. We cannot overflow in that case. So whenever you do math in a computer, somebody has to know whether or not you intend for the computer to consider the values signed integers or unsigned integers. And if you consider them signed, you have to do a different test for overflow than if you consider them unsigned. And most computers, fortunately, have a carry bit and a V bit. They don't all. Uh, our, the PIC chip we use in Micro 1 doesn't have a V status bit, uh, but it does have a carry bit. So you then you have to do your own, uh, sort of make your own test for the V bit. OK, um, when you do math in one's complement, you, you, well, in two's complement, you do math, you can ignore the carry, which is really nice. But you do have to check for overflow. In one's complement, you have to do end around carry. So if you get a carry out, you have to add it back in, which is a real, that's a hassle. Um, so uh, so we, that's another reason why we don't really like one's complement. And we have equal, we have similar problems with sine of magnitude. Okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, so how do you convert from decimal to a, to a base? So normally, normally you would uh, just use a calculator to do this. But in this course, we're not going to ever use calculators. And so on the first test, you're going to have to do this calculation by hand. So we're going we're gonna to show you how to do that. And it's, it's very straightforward. Um, and I'll work through a couple of examples here. Um, obviously, for sake of time, you wouldn't want to normally do this if you were working. You just you'd use a calculator, or you'd have the computer do it for you, whatever. Uh, but I want you to see how it's done, just to kind of so you got a sense of kind of what it takes. And when you uh, put data into a computer, the computer has to run an algorithm where it does this conversion. Uh, so it's a, so there's a there's always an overhead when you put decimal numbers into a computer that are going to be stored in binary format. And, uh, and then you can do the binary, then you can do all the rest of the math in binary inside the computer. But then when you want to 
print the numbers back out, you have to do another fairly complicated conversion from the binary into, say, decimal, if that's what you're going to print out. All right, so let's, um, let's do that. So, so this kind of shows how you do it, but this, uh, I, I can't even decipher this myself. So, uh, so let's say we're going to go from, uh, we're going to go from a decimal number n in base 10 to some other number r. Let's, let's, in, for our purposes, we're only going to use binary or hex. And actually, going to hex, it's easier to go to binary and then just switch the binary number into hex. So, so we're going to just do binary pretty exclusively. All right, so let's, let's see how, how we would do that. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is, um, um, is switch out the camera here. And we'll, we'll do a little work in Okay, now, let me get a, some more paper. All right, so, so here's my, let's start with a binary number. I think I'm going to, there'll be an example here in just a minute. But, um, so let's say, let's say we're going to switch, um, let's say we're going to switch 63 into, from base 10 into binary. All right, so we, we, we use this funny division thing. We're going to divide it by the base, which is 2. We're going from base 10 to base 2. So 2 into 6 is 3, and 2 into 3 is 1, uh, remainder 1. So that's 31. And then we, do, we divide 2 into 31, and we get 15, remainder 1. 2 into 15, we get 7 remainder 1, 2 into 7 we get 3, remainder 1, 2 into 3 we get uh, 1, remainder 1, 2 into 1 we get 0, remainder 1. So it turns out 63 is, now this was a bad choice, I'll do another one, uh, yeah, and this, it's not, it's too hard to see it, but notice we have all 1's it turned out for this choice. So. Our final number, it, well, what, what I want you to see is this is the low order bit. And this is the high order bit. So down here, the last bit, that's the high order bit. So we would write our number 111111. And you can see that is 63 because this is 1. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So 32 plus 8 is 40, plus 16 and 4 is, is another 20 or 60. And then our, then, and 3, 2 and a 1, so that's 63. So yeah, that is 63. And I should have remembered that, because of course 64 would be, um, we'd have a 1 out here and all zeros. All right, let's do a different one. Let me see which one actually uh, was supposed to come up here. I can't remember. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is. So we'll do. We'll do. We're gonna do. Let's do 53 next, and and then you kind of see how this works. Okay. Um, all right. So. So 53. So same same deal. I'll try and write them a little smaller. So here we have uh, 53. We're going to divide that by 2, and that's going to give us 21, remainder 1. Remember, that's low order. So we can go ahead and put that 1 over here. Uh, too far. We'll put the 1 right there. Now we're going to divide 21 by 2. That's 10, remainder 1. So that's another 1. Two, 10 divided by 2 is 5, remainder 0. So that's a 0. 5 divided by 2 is 2. Remainder 1. It's a 1. And 2 into 2 is 1. Remainder 0. And 2 into 1 is 0. Remainder 1. And 2 remainder 1. And we'll put the, that last one up there. So this number then equals 53 in binary.
So that's base 2. This is base 10. Let's check it. So here's the number again. 101011. So that's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. 32 plus 8 is 40, plus 3 is... Oh, did I do something wrong here? Uh, I did something wrong. One, oh, I left, a, I left a 1 out. No, that's 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Oh, I did it wrong. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, one one zero one zero one. Okay, so let's see one two four eight sixteen thirty two. Uh, okay, my brain. That's uh, fifty three. Yeah, it's. Yeah, something's really a mess here. Let's try it again. Man, okay. 